Hello, Christy here with you today, and I'm going to show you a quick little tutorial on creating a scene using digital stamps in Adobe Photoshop CS 5.1. I might be using CS 5.1, but you can use Photoshop Elements just as easily for this tutorial. So to use in our scene, I've got the digital stamps Daydream Fairy and Mushroom Garden. Now I have both of them open as a PNG because we want to be able to layer them. You'll know it's PNG by the checkerboard background. That's showing you that unlike in these areas there is no background to the image. To do this tutorial you're going to need to have open your layers palette and your navigator. Now if these aren't open already for you just go up to your window and then click on your layers and then your navigator and they'll pop up. All right, to get started, we are going to create a new file. This is going to be the canvas that we build our scene on. So let's see. Let's just make it really big so we know that everything is going to fit. You can always trim it down later. Open. Boom. All right. Now, Navigator down here has a percentage of what is shown on your screen. You can zoom in by hitting the bigger mountains and out by the little mountains. This is really helpful if you're layering quite a few things on your canvas. You can zoom in and get a better look at how things are shaping up. So there's two ways to get our digis onto our new canvas. So for the first one, I'm going to show you this way. First thing you can do is go to Select All and then Copy and then go to our new canvas and Paste. Ta the second way you can do it is you can drag this off and it'll pop up and then click on your digi. You'll know it's selected in the layers palette and just drag it right over. You can see the little plus next to my cursor. Boop. And then you can either close it or put it back up. I'm just going to put it back up here. So we have both of our images. You'll notice they're kind of different sized, but that is okay because we have a really big canvas. So now we kind of have to decide what we want to do with our images. I picked Daydream Fairy because she's got kind of, she's leaning on the mushroom and the mushroom scene I thought would be kind of cute together. So what I'm thinking of doing is um, layering her in to stand kind of right here in the mushroom scene. Now there's a couple little technical bits you're going to need to know to be able to manipulate the images in Photoshop. The first is your layers palette. This palette is pretty important in terms of how your images are going to show up together in your canvas. So our first layer is, or layer one, we'll say that, is Daydream Fairy. Layer two is our Mushroom Garden. You can test to see which is which by clicking the little eye because then they'll disappear. So now with Mushroom Garden being on top of Daydream Fairy, it's going to go over the top of her, and that is not what we want. I mean, she doesn't want mushrooms on her face or something like that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to click and hold that layer and drag it underneath. You can see the thicker gray line between layer one and the background. That's what we want, and then let go. So, now Mushroom Garden is behind, which is just what we want. So the layers palette in this case, and in any case when you're working in multiple images, is a very important thing to have. 
Now the other kind of smallish skill that you're going to need is working with the transform um, tool, I guess you could say, in Photoshop. You can find it by going to Edit, Transform. Now you can, uh, it popped up off screen, quit popping up off screen. But um, it has a lot of different things you can do. You can flip, um, you can scale, rotate, all this different stuff. I prefer to use the free transform because that does everything all in one except for the flipping. So now you can see that a box has appeared around Mushroom Garden. Since that's the smaller of the images and we made such a big canvas, I'm not going to scale that one. So I'm going to click enter and then do the same thing with Mushroom Fairy. Edit, free transform. Okay, so these little squares that show on the box around your image are what you need to drag to um, change the size. Or if you go out a little bit from the box, you'll see that it changes into a um, cornered arrow, and that's rotate. So now you can just squish her or you can make her super chubs. But if you want to keep, I'm going to okay, undo. Um, if you want to keep her the same, whoops, the same scale as she currently is, that is super easy too. So you just hold down your shift key and you go up to this corner one and then you just drag it in and it will keep her the same scale while shrinking her. Now we're just going to shrink her a bit and then we'll zoom on in, hit enter to end it. And we're going to zoom in on our navigator to get a better look at this. Okay, so let's bring them kind of a little closer together. I'm going to close our layers palette. So now we just need to decide how big we want her in this scene. So let's kind of just layer, oops, layer her over the top. I think she looks a smidge big right now. What do you guys think? Not that you can answer me, but so we're going to go back up and free transform. We can also hit control T. If you end up doing this a lot, it'll come to be second nature. So and let's hit enter. I think that actually looks pretty good. Let's see. Now there's a couple other things you can do. You can leave the mushroom garden as it is. Now, because the lines are a little thicker than um, Daydream Fairy, it might look a little funny, but that's okay too. Once you color it, it probably won't even be noticeable. Another thing you can do is change the opacity or the fill, which is fills right here too, on your layers palette. And what that'll do is obviously it'll change the opacity of the image you have selected. What that does is since it's on a white background, it will kind of gray. The image out. What that can do for you is make it to look like those mushrooms are further in the background, you know, to give the illusion of distance. So if you want to do that, you totes can. But for our purposes, I'm just going to leave it all the way up. Okay, so now since we made such a big canvas, which was good because you saw how big Daydream Fairy was. We are going to crop it down and then save. So to crop, we're going to use our marquee tool and then just cut a square around it. You can see the little dancing dotted lines. Boop. And then go to image, crop, and ta-da, we have our little scene.
the next thing to do would be to save. Now you can save it as either a JPEG or a PNG. Another thing you could do is if you wanted to come back and use this again but be able to change it is to go to file, save as, you could save it as a Photoshop PSD. What that does for you is saves all the layers as they are. Now that is not an image you can use to print, but that is an, a file that you can use to come back in later and edit. So I'm going to save this as a JPEG. Boop. And let's name it Mushroom Scene. I can't spell it. Eh? I'm making sure I'm putting this in. Let's just put it in here. And save. You can also use save for web, but to keep the um, DPI, you save as. DPI is how well, clearly it's going to print. There's a little tech for you. So there you have it. You can do that with as many images as you want. There's a lot more that you can do in Photoshop with this idea as well. And if you like this video, let me know and I can do a advanced tips. Because I had a few more things rattling around in my head and I realized how long that video was going to be if I did them all in one. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. That helps our videos show up higher in search results. Um, leave us a comment, subscribe, share with your friends, but most importantly, put the tutorial to use and create some fun scenes. So I will see you next time. Check out semigirl.com for all these images and more. Thanks so much for watching.